and welcome to Inquire to Choir. My name is Eva and I'm here to help you fellow choir people. <laughs> Why am I saying choir people instead of something more professional? Because I'm very aware of the fact that the choir's leadership doesn't consist of conductor roles exclusively. And if you're here watching this video, chances are you are a non-professional in a non-professional choir. And for this very reason, the topic of my very first content video is how to choose, form, and organize the leadership of a non-professional choir. Every choir works differently. It's like a family. There are lots of ways to be a family. That is why I'm going to try to be as inclusive and general as possible. So this video has the potential of helping you a lot. However, I will also give you a specific organizing method, which I find to be very effective and very efficient. Let's start. So you have a group of people and you have a conductor. That is enough. No, it is not. It doesn't matter how big or small your choir is, if you only have one person in charge, that is not a wise way to go. For two main reasons. The first reason, the amount of work is too much for a single person. Trust me, been there. And the second one, which is a crucial one for me, if you only have one person in charge, that means only one opinion is forming the decisions. Here's the thing, you may have a great conductor who is very considerate and who has a priority of listening to choir members' opinions. But even if you have such a conductor, trust me, there will come a time where the choir members are going to disagree with him or her. More on that later, the point is you need more people in your choir's leadership. In a professional choir, there are finely defined roles. Just in case you haven't been in any contact with those roles before, here they are. Choir conductor, choir director, choir secretary, choir PR, choir finance committee, and choir members representative. It depends on the profile of a particular choir, but I think this covers it. That means in a perfect world, you need at least six people in charge. Let's just say six people, uh, six reliable people is very hard to find. And to answer the most frequently asked question right on, a choir director has the executive position in everything non-music related. From scheduling, concert season planning, concert booking, in short, a choir director is a choir manager. This is the reason I'm giving you now an organizing method with less people. This is a sample of how one of my choir works, and I truly believe their amazing organization is the key in being so successful. The choir has its president, who serves as the choir director, choir conductor, choir secretary, and choir PR. Yes, that's only four people. Let's describe who does what. Choir public relations person manages all of the choir's announcements on all media and social platforms. This is a person who represents the choir in the public eye. In short, he is responsible for everything related to the public. <laughs> Some don't understand why I emphasize needing a person dedicated exclusively to this field. I tend to think those people underestimate the amount of work there can be. Choir secretary. Have you ever realized the word secretary derives from the word secret? While the secretary surely does a lot of administrative work, but the key role of the choir secretary is to be the right hand of the choir's president. Choir conductor. <laughs> choir conductor is the musical leader of the choir, handles everything related to music, and of course is a conductor at concerts. He or she has the executive power when it comes to music decisions. And finally, the president. The word president speaks for itself. He or she, or she or he, is the boss. This person has the highest responsibility and has the executive power. In short, he does what a choir director does. A great conductor will be very in tune with their choir and will cooperate with the choir's president. In a perfect world, the choir's president and the choir's conductor should try to work in perfect harmony. Pun intended, I'm so sorry now. <laughs> this is a key thing for me. The president of the choir, the choir secretary, and the choir PR. They should all be members of the choir. 
who have been members of the choir for some time and who have proven to be consistent and dedicated to the choir. And they should be chosen by the choir members. Don't appoint someone who has never been in the choir, mainly because that person can possibly know how your choir breathes. This is important. This way you can be sure that they really care about the choir because they have already shown they care and they were chosen by the very same people who they're gonna be in charge of. And trust me, they will not want to let their peers down. If that works, if they're chosen by the choir members and they were choir members, they can form the choir members representative. If you have a very efficient president, secretary and PR, they can even form a great and successful financial committee. You can even give a conductor a financial advisor role. I approve of the concept of the conductor being an outsider. I believe it gives the conductor more objectivity and more authority. This way, the choir has a greater sense of a group and they're more willing to be led by a conductor because they feel they're safe regarding everything else. But Eva, what if I have a really small choir and having four people in charge seems really excessive? Well, I have a solution for you, but I think it's not the one you were looking for. Instead of four people, choose three. The first way to go is to have a conductor, a secretary and a PR. In this case, the conductor also serves as a choir president or choir director. I think this is okay for a smaller choir because the president or the conductor uh, still has uh, two assistants and they're also the representatives of the choir member. The second way to go is to have the president, the conductor and the secretary. And all the PR related stuff is done by the secretary. You decide what works best for your choir, just don't have less than three people, that's the bottom line. There you have it, this is my advice on how to choose, form and organize the leadership of a non-professional choir. If you like this video, hit the like button below, share it with your friends and be sure to subscribe. There will be a new video every Thursday on this channel. And speaking of, the next topic, the topic of the next video next Thursday will be a profile of a non-professional or amateur choir singer. Conduct well conductors and other choir people, now we know. And I'll see you on Thursday. Bye!